I have to do a star because then John, you know, gets uh, cranky. <laughs> hey, hello. So we are going to start bagging, specifically for for trees. So bootstrap aggregating is also another name. So this method is a general method and we can use it to reduce the variance uh, and improve accuracy by reducing the overfitting. So yeah, we, we use this method for model that uh, change a lot based on the data. So it's not really useful for linear models. Uh, that's the case. Uh, how this method works. So we create people's traps. So yes, this is a argument that we need to tune. A copies of the original set. So as the example that we see here, we have five data points for each quarter, and we need to sample each of them with replacement. So we can repeat more than five times one type of the one point data, and then we apply our we base learner it's a model but as we have the as a whole this is a model they say that it is the base learner so we apply the base learner for its bootstrap and aggregate the results based of the type of model that we are running it's a regression we take the average it's a classification we take the the mode we have to Two ways. So we can average the estimate class probabilities, or we can use the priority vote, popularity vote. So we take the mode here. Uh, we explain in a stable or have bias model is not really useful, as we can see in the polynomial regression or the Mars. But for decision trees, yeah, that's great method. It's important to highlight that we don't prune decision trees to ensure that low bias and high bias in our base learner. So even though we could prune, uh, we don't do it. And we keep the number of observations to split really low also in order to get the more different trees that we could. I know you have uh, something to say about it. Uh, no, everything okay. good. Great. So as we are making a uh, bootstrapping, so we are applying a resample method, we have a really good way to estimate the, the error, the test error in our uh, boost, bootstrapping is the out of back. Uh, for every uh, bootstrap, we don't use one third of the observations. So after applying all the bootstraps, we will have a B under three, it's a prediction for each point. So we can then aggregate them and calculate the test error based on that prediction. So it's really an approximation to the leave one out cross validation, as we have one test error for each observation. Uh, but it's not the same as we are not using all the decision trees to make our estimation. We are just using the remaining of this equation. Uh, but the difference between the estimation is really low. So they create an example of 200 trees. And this was the residual mean square error. Uh, and the other one estimated with the out of back was really close. But the difference in time to compute the uh, each of them is really different. So they just take one minute and the other one uh, took 26. So yeah, this is a really powerful way to estimate error in this case. 
So for this example, we are going to use this package. We will use these two from the tidy models at the end and, and the other ones that the book says. And we split the data because they do it. They don't show how they do it. Uh, so when we are training the batteries using the ePred bugging function, I press back in function. Uh, we first start uh, setting a seed as we are going to make a resample. Then we need to define the number of trees to model, to using the model. Uh, for, we can use also the our back error rate, setting this part, this argument to true. Here we can also uh, specify a uh, for the argument of the R part function. So we can say, oh, the mean split, the default is 20. But well, uh, we mentioned we need to use less, a uh, uh, number, of, uh, fewer number of observations. So we set it to two. That's what they are doing here. And also the CP, the complexity parameter, they set it from 0 0.01 to zero, as we don't want to apply any prune process. And here is the error rate, the mean square error. Uh, that process was really slow. So I'm not running this culture. So they, and they compare here, how as more trees, the bear gets the predictions, but it finish, it stabilized uh, after some number of trees. So yeah, we try to find that point and don't use more trees that we really need. So how we can parallelize this process? Uh, they use the, for each package. So they define make cluster. I don't really understand how they select A. I was worried my computer does we work. It works, I don't know how they, What's the criteria to, they use to, to select that? And yeah, there I is can, the- I, I can help you there. Yeah, from great. The, from the number of cores that mm -hmm. your system has, okay? Uh, for example, if you are using, I think if you are using an Intel, uh, let's say i7, i9, uh, you should have, at least in the i7, I know that you should have at least a eight, eight, uh, independent uh, course, okay? And there's a way, there's a mechanism to determine instead of inputting directly that that number, uh, there is an instruction, I don't, I don't remember, I, I think it's detect course or something like that, that uh, detect the course in your, in your machine. And then you can use that number, you know, assign it to a variable, then you can use that number, you know, to uh, uh, create your clusters. But usually it's the no number of cores that you have in your uh, specific yeah, machine. Okay. Yeah, so probably if, if you have an i7 or maybe uh, I have in my machine, I have a Ryzen, I mean AMD, Ryzen 7. It has it has eight, but usually it detects uh, virtual cores and the virtual cores are 16, okay? So okay. I can use 16 independent uh, vir virtual cores uh, here, okay? Uh, let me tell you, you know, in for this kind of algorithms, uh, XGBoost and all that, uh, you need parallelization, okay? Because if not, it's going to take a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, to run this, yes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I, I have a Ryzen five. Ryzen five, yeah. I think you have. Uh, I think you have six, six cores, but you have twelve uh, vir virtual cores. Virtual okay. Points. You you can check it in the package. Uh, check something called detect cores. 
okay? okay. And right. when you detect cores, it will tell you, okay, uh, you have X amount of, of, uh, of you know, available cores. And then you can use that number to set up your cluster. Right. So, uh, so and then we use the for each, and they are using, in, in, for this example, 660, and in package, they are just using the R part. So they, they need to use in this section, just base R and R part uh, for, uh, functions. And they use the bootstrap just with the training data and always apply the prediction with the test data. So after applying this function, we will have always the, the same number of rows to the prediction, to the test data, to the test data. And uh, they will have, uh, how many columns, uh, how many trees? Okay, 100, uh, 106 columns. So they will have, we will have a uh, one column per tree and one row uh, per observation of the test data in a ma matrix. Uh, so to, in order to estimate the error curve, to calculate the error curve, and also to extract the, and use the value to, to make all the, that we need, uh, they may be data wrangling. So they start uh, transforming the matrix into a data frame, a table, in this case, just to be tidy. Uh, I really like this way to add the columns. Uh, I really like this way. You see, mutate, right? I would use, uh, I would use uh, C bind maybe. So create one data frame with this and they C bind. Well, mutate is a really clever way to do it. Then they reshape the data frame in a long format. And this part, I I think there is a there is a better way to do this because what they need is to transform trees from having resort point three one two three to just have the number. So what they do, what they did is to group it by observation and they apply a string strap. But that, that function returns a list and they need to set it to numeric and that's a really long process. So as the expression is really, it's the same expression. It's, it's better to use a string remove. So you can remove exactly the word and just keep the number and then set it to integral. So we don't need to group by observation. Then for each observation, they use, they average the predictions from a different number of trees. That, that was really clever here really, because someone could think that use a for loop for that as we need, uh, you need to have different measurement, but consume, come me, really do that. So as you have in that order for each observation, they will start, oh, let's take the mean for one tree, for two trees, for four trees. And you are getting all the resource in each row. And then they summarize for each tree, the RMSE. And then just, they just need to plug. And that's the same uh, chart that we saw before. Uh, for feature interpretation, the IPRED package uh, doesn't work really well. So I prefer to use the, the tidy model framework to, to handle that part. So to infer how features are influencing our model is not enough just to measure 
uh, the feature importance based on the sum of the reduction in the loss function attributed to each variable are is a split of a single tree. Then we need to aggregate this measure across all trees for each feature. Since we have many trees, we tend to have many more features involved, but with lower levels of importance. So we have more features here, uh, but nor they are so important as they used to be based on the tree model. So we can use this function, do parallel, set the, our C trainable model. Uh, I couldn't use workflows here. So it took me a little bit of time to understand that I need to just create the model, define the model, and then just feed the model directly. And with that fit, I could use all the inter, uh, interpretation bin or, or the next one also. So here we can place our fit model and we can plot our importance. So the we can see here how features are distributed. So in the partial dependent plots, we can see the non-linear relationship of each feature related to our response variable. And we can also use the same, the same, the same model. And here we can see the relation is not so linear. Sometimes go well, both are like increasing, but not in the in a linear way. So our final thoughts. Uh, bagging improves the patient accuracy for high variance, for high variance, low bias models. Uh, BP, BIPs and DP, no, and PDPs can help to, in, to make inference about how model leverage feature information. So and it's easy to do in part. It performs independent processes. But the trees are not completely independent each other of each other, since all original features are considered at every split of every tree, returning correlated results, which stop mother, the mother for the reduction of variance. So, and that's the problem that random forest will help us to manage in the next chapter. And have you have uh, something to say about this part? Okay. So yeah, that, that was that was good, you know, very concise and you know to the point. Um just, just a comment on uh, just, just on on that slide. Um uh you said that uh you didn't you didn't use the workflow, and that's okay because what what happens is that you know when you create the uh, uh, you know the the objects on the tidy models framework mm -hmm. uh you know you you start with your train and split right then usually what you do is that you create a recipe right right you create the recipes for some for example uh uh tra transform uh some variables right you know uh, log transform yeah, uh, use your recipe to um, standardize your numeric variables. Oh, input it also. Main exactly to, to in, in input missing values. Uh, you do dummy, uh, you know, uh, one hundred encoding, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can do in the recipes also. You can do if the class is imbalanced. You can you know try to balance that class down sample, up sample, whatever. So what happens here is that because the random forest is based on decision trees, you usually don't need to use those uh, pre-process uh, steps, okay? Uh, you know, when you do a decision tree, uh, it is, it's going to handle the categorical variables, it's going to handle the, you know, different ranges in numeric variables. It doesn't have that, you know, uh, pre-process, uh, 
it doesn't require that pre-process that other algorithms like uh, regression, KNN, et cetera, require, okay? So what happens here is that you really don't need a pre-process uh, step, a recipe step. So what you're doing is then jumping into discarding that process and then go right into the fit, right? Because the workflow, what it does is that it combines the recipe with the model spec, all right? So if you don't have a recipe, you don't need a workflow, basically. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just thinking about uh, right. when, when I really need it, you know, it's like, okay, I want to use the bit package to right. have, and the point I, I couldn't find this morning how to extract the feed from the workflow. Exactly. Yeah, uh, that, this is one way to do it because the algorithm uh, doesn't require that pre-processing. You know, if it, if it requires a recipe, for example, for uh, imbalance classes to balance the classes, then it will require a workflow. Okay, but if it doesn't require pre-processing a recipe, uh, you can do it this way. Okay. You can do it also to bake the train data step. So using the same structure, just if I need right. to use recipes, I could bake the train data and just do the same. Yeah, you could you could do that. But the but the good thing is that the workflow simplifies that process. Okay, because it takes care of you when then you're going to you know find finalize that workflow. Okay. Okay, so the other thing that I noticed is that you're using the engine, you're using random forest, and that's fine, okay? Mm -hmm. There's another engine that you can use, okay, for the Ranger auto spec, which is Ranger, okay? And usually Ranger is a much faster algorithm than random forest, because random forest is the original uh, algorithm, you know, done by the ones that created this algorithm called random forest. Okay, a Bremen and somebody else. Uh, but Ranger is uh, algorithm. It, it it gives you different results. Okay, so you know you have to you have to be aware of that. Okay, it gives you different results, but usually it's much faster than random forest. Okay? okay, so that that you can you know you can you can play around with it. And in the chat, I found out in Do Parallel, you can use Get Do Power Workers. Uh, to extract the number of cores that you have in your specific uh, computer. Okay, so okay. you can use that as, you know, CL, right? You know, as a CL cl uh, cluster or cores, a variable, and then input instead of uh, make cluster A, make cluster uh, a cores, okay? And automatically it's going to set up that, or maybe cores minus one, because usually you want to spare one to do the other things, the operating system and everything. If you do mm -hmm. all that, your machine is going to be, uh, you know, if you want to run another task like a browser, it's going to be very slow. Okay, so if you spare one uh, for all those functions, then you know you should be okay. Okay, okay. that's some you know, right. strategy on you know clustering. But yeah, everything everything good. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, Telling yeah. model doesn't have a function for bugging and random forest is the same just. We need to use all the predictors in that scene. Yeah, and also you can, for example, uh, you can tune, you know, the the random forest like we did the decision tree. Uh, you can put in those parameters. You can put tune parentheses, and then create a grid. So you can have uh, more optimal results for the combination of uh, hyperparameters. Yeah, okay? of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So this is them. This is the 